ng sitong bayan, sa mga tambay yung nakaraan, pinag-usapan natin yung uh, topic particularly related to the assembled computer hardware. So ngayon po, natapos natin yung iba mga topics. So yung gagawin naman natin ngayon is pag-uusapan natin itong tinatawag nilang safety protocols. Okay? So, let's begin. So as mentioned, yung pag-uusapan natin ngayon is itong safety protocols. Okay, safety protocols is referred to the safety guidelines. Safety guidelines that will help protect individuals from accidents and injury. They also help to protect equipment from damage. Some of these guidelines are designed to protect the environment from contamination caused by improperly disregard materials. So, according to the law, In the Philippines, under the new OHSS Act, or also known as RA 11058, employers are now required to comply with occupational safety and health standards. It is mandate in the Philippines na kailangan nating sundin. Uh, it help also to protect you, the environment. and the devices that you're going to use. In computer system servicing, there are OHS edge policy that we always follow. And number one, do not work alone. There must always someone who can take care of you in case of emergency. So kailangan, during your training, may kasama kayo na pwede mag-supervise and to check always. So in case of um, uh, Para naman po, pag may emergency, pwede kayong matulungan agad. Number two, check your surrounding before working. To avoid falling object and other things that may cause accident to you, other person, or even to the computer devices, it is very important to check your surrounding before working. So, for example, meron pong mga liquid na pwedeng matakos sa computer nyo, kailangan nyo i-check. or itabi mo na yun, check nyo yung sa ulo nyo kung meron bang mga falling object or sa baba, kung meron bang mga pwede nyo masagi yung mga kaibol. Number three, always off and unplug the computer before working. So, during yung assembled a computer hardware, kailangan naka-turn off po yan. It will help you to avoid being electric shock during fixing a computer. To avoid electric shock kung ayaw nyo makurentihan, so kailangan naka-off yan. Number four, use appropriate tools and use it properly. Tools may cause short circuit, tools may cause short circuit or damage to the device if it's not used properly. And using appropriate tools will help you protect the device. Number five, always ground. Discharge result before touching any computer parts or computer devices. You can grab a metal for 20 seconds to avoid electric surge discharge. So yung katawan po kasi natin mga katambay, meron niyang kakaunting electricity na na-adapt natin during using cell phones, computers, and etc. Tapos, pwede natin siyang matransfer sa device that may cause damage to the computer devices. So, keep that in mind. Always ground yourself. Number six, do not use excessive force. So, tightening a screw in a device required only enough force. Using too much may damage it. So, use your force gently. Clean the area before and after. Cleaning will help you maintain sanitation and prevent accidents. Number 8. Properly handle component according to the manual. All of the components have a manual that will guide you how you can properly handle a device. It will also help protect and clean the device properly. Number 9. Always wear personal protective equipment. Wear the PPE in accordance with the organizational OHS procedure and practices. In some cases, in your office or in a training area, 
there are standards set by the company that you still need to follow. Number 10. Always refer to the documentation or diagram before installing any device or cable. Make sure that the pins are properly aligned when connecting a cable connectors or during inserting a device in their respective socket or port. Alignment is the key. Number 11. Recognize contingency measure during workplace accidents. Contingency plan for an incident such as fire, earthquake, and other emergency must acknowledge. Number 12. Dispose waste properly. Computer devices are non biodegradable and can be disposed or decomposed in a little time. So be wise in disposing it. So that's our DOS and H policy in CSS. Another cleaning method that I would like to introduce is this 5S. 5S refer to sort, set it under, shine, standardize, sustain. Uh, it is Japanese method adopted in the Philippines that use to organize or to systemize the cleaning. So let's start with the sort. Sort eliminates whatever is not needed by separating needed tools, parts, and instruction from unneeded materials. Number two, set in order. Set in order, organize whatever remains by neatly arranging and identifying parts and tools for ease of use. Number three, shine. Shine help clean the work area by conducting a cleaning up campaign. Number four, standardize. Schedule regular cleaning and maintenance by conducting Siri, Chitun, and Sishu Deli. So these are the Japanese terms being used that we mentioned earlier. Siri refer to sort, Chitun refer to set in order, and Sishu refer to shine. Number five or last, Make 5S a way of life by performing the habit of always following the first 4S. Now we're going to discuss about the tools and documents. So let's start with the tools. So mga katambay, during assemble and disassemble the computer hardware, there are tools that you're going to use. So may ginagamitin po tayo yung mga tools. Instead of showing you all the tools or essential tools uh, that uh, ginagamit sa assessment, yung gagawin ko or sa training, yung gagawin ko is show ko lang yung mga tools na gagamitin natin during assemble and disassemble. So for example, ito yung pinakaguna, itong anti-static map or rubber map. Okay? So kailangan meron kayong ganito pag nag-assemble kayo and assemble. It will protect the devices pag tinanggal nyo na. It also reduce the damage of computer devices. Okay? O oh, yan. Rubber mat. Pangalawa is ito anti-static grease. O oh, yan. So, paano ba ito gamitin? Alam? Lagyan nyo lang dito. And yan. Lagyan nyo dyan. Pagkatapos Ito naman, yung kiklip nyo dun sa, for example, ito yung metal. And yan. Para yung kurente nyo, instead mapunta dun sa device, mapupunta sa metal na pinagbitan nyo. Okay? So, yan. Another important tools na common yung ginagamit during assemble or disassemble a computer is ito, screwdrivers. Screwdrivers to remove the screws. So, meron tayong dalawang klase, meron tayong Phillips screw at star screw. Uh, by the way, I just want to emphasize na yung mga screw, magkakaiba yung supat dyan. So make sure yung gagamitin yung screwdrivers is swap dun sa pag kukunan nyo ng screw. Kasi baka ma-loose thread, uh, masira yung screw pag masyado malaki o masyado Okay? Another thing is the brush. So important po meron po kayong brush kasi may kadalasan po kasi. Importante po meron kayong brush kasi kadalasan may dumi yung computer. So much better na tanggalin nyo using brush instead of using 
uh, a dry mag o basang basahan. Okay? Ayan. Meron tayo tinatawag itong headlamp. Ayan. So, nilalagay po ito dito sa ulo. Ayan. Ayan ito. Para ano pa? Ayan. So, para po makita nyo yung mga ganyan. Especially pag madilim, pag nagre-refer kayo o pag may mga maliliit na object na hindi nyo nakikita, gagamit ko kayo ng headlamp. Ayan. So, yung something says po, gumagamit din po tayo ng ito, lungs. At sky no flies na matulis yung dulo pag gusto tayo yung ah, may gusto kayong abutin na pesa na hindi na kailangan ng kamay. Okay? Technical flies Gumagamit din tayo minsan ito pag kailangan natin na may hawakan. Okay? Pero, uh, kadalasan, screwdriver lang po talaga. Meron din po tayong mini cutter. May mga wires or mga cable na kailangan po tuloy. Ayan. And, bended nose flights. So, yung mga part na medyo kailangan itong gamitin na In some cases po, gumagamit din po tayo ng multi-tister. Ayan. Pero kadalasan hindi na. In some cases lang. And then, in some cases din po, gumagamit din po tayo ng soldering iron. Okay? And in some cases, gumagamit din tayo ng bar stripper. So those are the tools na kadalasan yung gagamitin during assemble and disassemble a computer hardware. But most of the time, ang dalawa, eto, pangatlo, lang ang kadalasan yung ginagamit. Okay? So, if you don't have an anti-static risk, pwede nyo pong grab lang yung kamay nyo dun sa metal or yung sa tower case sa computer para mawala yung uh, electrical sa ating OST din yun. Okay? So, ngayon naman, continue, sinabi ko na pag-uusapan din natin yung documents. So, yung documents sa pag-uusapan natin, dalawa lang. Yung una is yung manual. So, may manual po tayong ginagamit. Sa lahat po ng iba yung sabihin ninyo, maging computer man yan, maging tools man yan, o oh, kahit anong devices, meron po talagang instruction manual na pwede nyo sundin. So yung mga manual na po yun, is yung mga makakatulong sa inyo during troubleshooting or kung paano nyo i-assemble o paano nyo hahawakan yung mga bagay-bagay. And yung pangalawang document naman po is yung natawag natin Diagnostic Record Documents. So it's good to have a record of Uh, diagnostic record para malaman nyo kung saan kayo mag-prepare. Okay? So, huwag natin patagalin. Let's start with our brain check. Ayan. Ayan. Just simply fill in the blanks. Okay? So, narealize ko na hindi ko na isi-show yung tamang sagot. Reviewin nyo na lang dun kung tama ba yung ginawa nyo. Eh, hindi. Kasi yung ginagawa daw ng iba is they just forward it and you know. So, give you time to answer this one. Just pause the video. Take your time. So, I guess that's it for now, mga katambay. So, yun na muna yung pag-uusapan natin. It's about the protocols. It's about the tools and the documents. So, next video po yung gagawin natin, I'm going to demonstrate to you detailed how you can assemble and disassemble a computer hardware. So, please stay tuned by clicking the notification bell. Kung gusto nyo rin kung mag-subscribe, malaking tulad din po yun. At kung may mga tanong kayo, please Leave a comment below and that's it. See you in the next video.